So we're just about to get on it, Mazzy, the famous road, supposedly the most notorious, scary road to drive on in the whole of Britain. It's yeah. called the Bilach Nabar. Um, I've been on it, I think, three, maybe four times before. Most people will know it as the Apple Cross Pass. Apple okay. Cross Pass, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it basically gets you to Apple Cross. They do say motorhomes are a bit big to go on it but I've heard many stories of people going on it up to and I've heard of motorhomes at eight and a half meters long on this and we're only seven and a half meters wow. so I'm pretty sure we're gonna be all right so I'm gonna make my way there now and we're gonna film quite a bit of it there is a video on YouTube of a 7.5 meter motorhome doing it you know like a sped up all the way yeah. oh, with music so if you want to see someone actually doing the whole thing in a motorhome I'd, I'd advise watching that it gives you a good idea when it came to the air pin bends it did have to sometimes reverse to get round you um, got any tips for doing this any tips yeah i can't really give you any tips until i've done it in a motorhome i've never done it in a motorhome <laughs> would you recommend doing it at night would you do it at night I have done it in the dark. Have you? I did do it in the dark ones, yes. Wow. And what you will find when we're up there, there's some really good viewing points, but most of the time it's too cloudy to see anything. You're actually up in the clouds. Oh my gosh. So I'm expecting it to be very foggy and misty up there. Right, let's get on with this. Yeah, you have arrived. I can't, I can't zoom in on this. You cannot see the sign there. It's like a warning telling you, uh, telling certain people they shouldn't come on this road, and it's just covered in stickers. You can't see it. The first thing I will say is it is, I believe, October the 11th or 12th. 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 Just to give you an idea of the conditions, the time of year. It is a Saturday, and it is 12 noon. So I was a bit a bit worried about coming up on a Saturday. I thought it might be quite busy, there might be quite a few cars coming, so we'll see anyway. So far we haven't seen anybody on the road. The entire length of this uh, Balachnabar, I keep saying that wrong, sorry, it's Bilachnabar. Um, the entire length is 11 miles and Google Maps says it's going to take 35 minutes. For a five mile round trip? No, 11 miles. Oh, really? It's 11 miles, it says. Oh, I read. To Apple Cross. So they say it's a really dangerous road. Is it one of the most dangerous roads in Scotland? It's supposedly the most dangerous road in Britain. Oh, really? Oh, God. Like, it does say don't attempt this in winter because it is probably impassable probably can't get past here but it's not winter yet luckily but the, here we are as first car as first passing place when you stop at a passing place always indicate to let them know that you have stopped I wonder if there's been silly people who's tried this in icy weather conditions I'll be honest with you, I've tried it in icy, <laughs> wintry conditions. Are you the stupid one? <laughs> I, when I did it in the dark once, it was snowing. Does I it, believe. Oh my god. I believe. I can't, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I seem to remember it was sleet or something like that. Well, it is okay so far. Is it going to get worse? We've only just got on it. Yeah, but I was expecting the worst. Is it going to get worse? It is going to get a lot worse, yes. Now, some people in a longer motorhome, like our friend Bob Earnshaw and a couple of others, have said they won't attempt this in their motorhomes. Now, theirs, I do know, are eight and a half metres, I think. Maybe a little bit bigger. This looks narrow. It's Sorry. fine. Sorry, I interrupted. Sorry. 
the, the, the don't want to attempt it because you have a big overhanging bit at the back of your motorhome and they're scared that you know it might scrape on the floor which is fair enough you know it's respectful if that's your decision it might just happen but I do know people in long ones have have tried it and said they've had no problems whatsoever um, what I would say is in a seven and a half meter it should be fine as, as long as your vehicle's pretty new if you've got dodgy brakes or a dodgy clutch I wouldn't attempt this because I did it in a car and the brakes and clutch weren't fantastic and I really felt like I was going to break down by the end of it getting a bit higher now Mazza I know I'm feeling it yes <laughs> Oh gosh, I can see the road really high, well, right up there guys, which I think we're obviously heading to. Look at the view down there, that is view. And on these single track roads, keep checking your mirrors as well, because if there's anyone behind you, these passing places aren't just for traffic coming the other way, it's for cars which are faster than you who want to get past. So pull up in the passing places, indicate so that they know that you've stopped and let them go past. Because this is used a lot by people in classic cars and motorcycles, they like to do this road. It's oh a bit, bit of a challenge for them. That's a bit of a windy one there. <laughs> so the simple answer is why don't they just make the road wider? Not able to, well, we've just been speaking about this. Um, with the North Coast 500, it is becoming so popular, and all the locals are starting to complain, quite rightly so, that the road system just is not suitable for so many motorhomes and travellers coming up here. So I've just been saying, I do think in the next like five, ten years, they are going to have to start thinking about getting rid of these single track roads if they want the people to come up here and spend the money they're going to have to cater for them because it's not fair on the people coming here and it's certainly not fair on the locals just clogging up all the roads Some cyclists cyclists wow can you imagine doing this on a bike yeah That'd be fun. <laughs> I could actually imagine this being an absolute nightmare though. The traffic in summer on this. Oh yes, definitely. I don't think I'd like to attempt it. Thanks guys, have a good day. So there's a car behind me now, so I'll be stopping at the next passing place. And the other thing they say about this road is always check, always keep looking into the distance for things coming because passing places aren't always very close by. Come on. Now that's the difference you see between someone who's been on this road before and knows what they're doing and someone driving a Ferrari who hasn't got a clue. He was, I just pulled over so that he could come past and he pretty much stopped behind me. Because he didn't know the road, he doesn't know how to use the roads. You've got to stop at the passing places and indicate and let them know. Oh my god, this is well dodgy now. I feel like, I just, just don't make us fall off this edge here, will you? Well, I certainly wasn't planning on uh, making us fall off this edge, Mazzy. <laughs> I know. I'm going to pull in here. There's a car behind. Well, there is a there was a car. I don't know where he's gone now, but I just want to have a quick look at this view. It is beautiful. Amazing view. So, I guess I think we've been driving eight minutes or something. Oh, it's just wonderful. Very windy. <laughs> Some of the passing places just aren't big enough for a motorhome and a car, really. 
I think they're wanting to stop and get a little look at the view. It's a bit embarrassing really though as well because they must be looking at us thinking, didn't you read the warning signs? Thinking that we're stupid doing this in this. It's up to them. And, you know, I have looked into this, a seven and a half metre motorhome can do this. If I feel capable of doing this, then I'll do it. There's no sign saying you can, you are not allowed to do this in a big motorhome. It's up to the individual. What I will say about that guy just back there though, he pulled into the passing place on the opposite side of the road. That's one thing you're not meant to do. Look at the drop down there, Mazza. Yeah, look at the drop. <laughs> That's quite scary. Thank God for that barrier. The road seems to be getting a little bit skinnier now. I'll tell you something, this uh, tuning box is still making this struggle. Really? Yeah, because we, we're going up quite an incline. We are at a big incline. You can't really tell on the video, I don't imagine. I'm having to go down to second gear quite often, which I wouldn't normally have to with this tuning box. But as long as we're getting up, I'm not bothered. Yeah, what I was trying to say is cars coming the other way sometimes because they don't know the roads would pull in here so that I could go past and they shouldn't be doing that they should always just stay on their side of the road that's one of the little rules of a passing place right I believe this might be the first hairpin bend And there's a car parked there, yeah. which is not good for us at all. There's two car, there's look at two. this. So it looks like a bottleneck. Idiots. It? So the road, guys, is literally going round. <laughs> oh, idiots, God. idiots. Thank you. <laughs> that was quite embarrassing. It's polite. embarrassing for them, not for us. Well, they were polite. They did sort of, you know, hold back and waited for us to do what we needed to do. So we got around that hairpin, no problem. Yeah. But I do believe there's much tighter ones than that. There's another one coming up here. Oh, gosh, yeah, that really With is. a car coming down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How are we going to do this? I hope there's a passing place. Oh yeah, it's definitely going to be width. Right, okay. All right, he's pulling in, is there anyone there? Right. So here we go. Thanks guys. And <laughs> round that one, well no done, problem. Babe. See, Bob Earnshaw, if you're watching this, get yourself on the um, Apple Cross Road. <laughs> no, the problem with Bob's, it's not, it's not the length. He knows he can probably get it round the corners. Yeah. It's just he's scared of scraping the bottom at the back. Well, we've got the same trouble though. Yeah, but theirs we? is longer than ours. Yeah. Theirs is, I think it might be 8.75 metres, theirs. Oh, this one looks terrible, babe. Yeah. This is another big air bin. Oh my God, and at the first gear. incline on this as well. Oh wow, well, this is actually really exciting, isn't it? It's something you have to do. Yeah. If you do the NC500, I think this is one the of the highlights. The way to do it, though, isn't it? It certainly is. It's yeah. one of the highlights of the trip. I'm actually feeling like the adrenaline running through me. It's quite exciting. So we've got 6.8 miles to go, 20 minutes, it says. So we're not even halfway yet. Oh, aren't we? No. But I do have a feeling that is the worst part of it. I'm not sure. Having said that, we do have to go back down again on the other side. I was just going to ask, actually, as we go climbing up, do we then end we up going down? We do have to go down. down because we're going to end up in Apple Cross, which is at sea level. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Now, 
Now there is a viewing point coming up. In fact, there's two, I believe. One called the Pass, and one called the Bielak Nabar viewpoint, which I believe is the very top. Oh, really? Yeah, so I think we will stop. This is the first. I'm not going to stop at that one. Right. I think this might, yeah, this is the oh, Bielak Nabar viewpoint. So there's a few people here. Few people. We'll just stop here for a second, see if we can get a good view for you. Yeah. It looks like Mars, don't you think? Yeah. How <laughs> you imagine yeah. Mars to look? So we're at the top of the Bilak Nabar now. Just give you a quick view. It's beautiful, isn't it? Got quite excited then because it looked like there was a three mast up there. I know. I thought we were going to get internet, but we don't. <laughs> um, a few motorbikers here from Yorkshire. Are you from Yorkshire? Lancashire. Lancashire. Oh, Lancastrians. Lancastrians. <laughs> we don't talk to them. <laughs> People travelling from all over Britain, you see, to come up here. Very popular for bikers and classic car drivers going up here. One thing you've got up here is this little point, which we can't really see, it's very worn now. But it tells you how many miles and where each of the mountains are on here. You can name them all, you can see them all in the distance. You can't on this camera, but uh, they're there, trust me, trust me. So away we go, five more miles to go, 18 minutes. So that half of the video really tests the power of your, your vehicle. Have you got the power to get up? And now, all the way down, you're testing the brakes. So the secret is not to go too fast, keep in a low gear, and touch your brake as, as uh, unoften. Is that a word, unoften? It's, it's as rarely opinion. as you can. <laughs> it's just so hard not to keep your foot on the brake all the way down, and that's when you start hearing the brake, the brake pads, the brake discs. By the time you get to the bottom, it should be all right in this because it's quite a new vehicle. Not had any trouble with the brakes, and it's just passed its MOT, so. Another hairpin coming up. Oh. Well, not quite a hairpin, but it's, this one actually looks very tight. It does, doesn't it? It doesn't give you much room to spread your wings, if you like. Okay, no problem at all. If that is all the worst hairpins out of the way, I would say they're very, very easy in a seven and a half metre motorhome, as long as you've not got traffic coming the other way, really. So I can see a white car in the distance there. It's a long way off. Yeah, it's a long way off, but I'm gonna... The, pr the thing is, you see, you stop at a passing place, and if he sees you as well, he stops at a passing place and sometimes he's around the corner waiting for you and you're waiting for him. But this one's okay, we can see each other okay. Oh, and he's done that, you see. That's what you're not meant to do. I think what he's doing though, no, realising our vehicle is bigger than his, so he's actually being quite polite. He is being very polite, okay. but he should stop there on my side of the road and indicate to let me know that he's stopping there should never stop in a passing place on the opposite side of the road because when there is a lot of traffic on the road that's how they get clogged up. There's a, there's a method to the madness. There is an awful lot of cracks and bumps in the road. You'd think for such a dangerous road they'd really keep on top of it and have freshly laid tarmac all the time. So if you can see the water in the distance there, I don't think you 
probably can't on that camera. But I think that's where we're heading for. I think that's where Apple Cross is, down in the uh, dip down there. How are you finding it, Mazzy? Really exciting. It's, I'm going to be honest, it, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, so... Yeah. I don't think I'd want to do it at night time, or in the snow. <laughs> The weather's actually very good today. I thought it was going to be torrential rain from what I was reading. And when we woke up, the clouds were on the... The clouds were sat on top of the hill, so I thought up here, the cloud, it would all be cloudy. He seems like he's struggling to get up that bit of a hill, doesn't he? he it's a foreign car. I think he was from Holland, a young couple. Seems as if he was having a good time. Now, what are these two going to do? This is a bit of a pickle because we're not actually in the pass, passing bay now, are we? Well, we are. I just didn't really want to go onto the gravel there. Maybe I'll have to. I don't know if I can. Kill us. <laughs> yes, some of these passing places are uh, still a bit too narrow for a motorhome and a car. So, if you can imagine if a motorhome's coming the other way, you would be in a pickle. I have actually been on this road and there's been lorries on here. Oh my gosh. Well, I suppose they have to. Their only route, I suppose. No, they, they don't have to. They could go the long way around. Oh, okay. Um, but I don't know. I suppose if it's like a maintenance vehicle, like a you know a lorry for repairing the roads, they have to use it. But yeah, it can cause a, a big problem. Now, Bila Nabar actually means. I think it means something like the pass of the cattle. And it was so the cattle could come along here to Apple Cross. If you're wondering what the Gaelic is, what it means. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly, to be honest with you. Bealach Nabar. That's my guess. Please correct me if I'm wrong. These are the narrow bridges you're talking about, aren't they? No. Oh, aren't These they? These are wide bridges. Oh, really? There is some much narrower ones coming up at the very peak, uh, just as you get to the top of Scotland. So we're heading to Apple Cross. There's not much at Apple Cross, to be honest. There is a bit of a car park, which always seems to be full. But all there is there, really, I think there's a bistro to get something to eat. There's an inn where you can get something to drink. Where we might go later on, it's up to you, Mazzy. It's, yeah. uh, it's where we're planning on parking tonight, or hoping to park. I think it's a 20, 25 minute walk to the bar, to the inn, so it's up to you whether we go or not. Um, and there's really nothing else there apart from a campsite. I was reading they also have a petrol station because apparently the next petrol, to get petrol, would be 37 miles away, is that correct? All right, yeah, that could be correct. Yeah, so if you guys are doing this, stock up, really. <laughs> You can get in yourself into a pickle coming into Scotland, can't you? You can. Like, we filled up with petrol just before we started the NC500. Um, but one bit of advice is don't... If you look on a map and put in petrol station on Google Maps, it shows loads along the North Coast 500. Don't take that for gospel, because I've heard during winter months a lot of them are shut. So don't rely on them being open. Same with shops. Although I would say you've probably got more petrol stations than shops on the NC500. We're a member of Brit Stops as well, and there's no Brit Stops whatsoever on this right up to John O'Groats now. So pretty much half of the NC500, there's no Brit Stops. And we'll, we'll be having to wild camping basically. Yeah, we'll be wild camping and car parks. That's, uh, that's our only option. So we're dropping down now 
In fact, Mazzy, if you look over there, yes, that is where we're parking somewhere. Oh, really? Is that Apple Cross itself then? No, Apple Cross is down in this direction. Right. That white house there, I think, is the Heritage Centre, which we might be going and it might be open. But we're parking pretty much opposite that, hopefully. But it is a very popular place to park and it is Saturday, so whether it's gonna there's gonna be room there, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So we're almost at the bottom now, just half of a mile. It's actually 1.8 miles to where we're stopping. Just at the bottom of this road. Now there are deer. A lot of people report deer around Apple Cross, a herd of deer. And I remember in my car, and they just, I had to stop my car so they could literally walk straight past me. So the view isn't as pretty as it was now, is it? Well, it's not. It's not as pretty as it was up there. But no. this is where the, the view actually gets good. The oh, best views of the NC500 are on the yeah, west coast. Right. And we're just starting the west coast, so um, we should be in for spectacular views over the next week or two. So that is the campsite down there. Oh, that's Apple Cross campsite down there. I did look into that. I think it was about twenty-five pounds. Oh, well, that's not bad, is it's it? It's not too bad, no. no. And when I was talking about the views, I was just trying to get at really is that when you do get the chance of up at the viewpoint at the top, halfway through the upper cross, mm -hmm. get out and actually suck up in the air. Oh yeah, you've got to get out. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful up there. So that is the end of the Apple Cross. Wow! That is Apple Cross just over there. We're Should now we going to have a look round Apple Cross. I think we'd have we to walk, Mazza. We'd have to walk. It's a very narrow, slow, small is car it? park and I wouldn't feel very comfortable in case it is full. Okay, well that was really fun, I enjoyed that. How did you feel about driving that? That was a lot easier than I thought or remember, to be honest with you. That was easier than when I did it in my small um, Citroen C3. Wow. Because this has a much better engine and uh, it's newer. Did you feel like you had a lot more better control there? With the engine yes. turbo, you know, helping you? Yeah, that, it was easy. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was fun. So I hope some people who were planning on coming on it, some people who were nervous about coming on it, have taken a bit of reassurance from this. Um, in a seven and a half metre motorhome, out of season, I wouldn't have any qualms about giving it a go. It's easy. Um, maybe in summer I'd think twice if the roads are going to be busy. If you eight meters and longer i might consider not bothering but that's up to you so that was the bielach nabar um the apple cross pass uh we hope that in you know we hope you found that informative enjoyable and then we hope it helps some people out who are planning on going on that road in a motorhome or a big vehicle or just a motorbike it doesn't really yeah. matter does it <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, yeah. if you want to see more of us travels around the NC500 click on the playlist, we've got dozens and dozens of videos going on there, we're going to do a detailed trip and show you all the sites as we're going around. See you all later, bye bye! Ah! Thanks for watching! Please comment and hit the like button, that helps our channel grow. If you like what you see, click here to subscribe. Check out this other great video. And if you really want to show your support, join the club, become a Patreon for extra videos and perks. The more support we get, the more content we can give. We'll see you tomorrow on Travel, Travel Trolls, Trolls TV. TV.